Hello everyone! So today here in Advanced Engineering Mathematics for Civil Engineers, we're now going to discuss the third part and the last part of our discussion about systems of linear equations. So for this topic, students must be able to evaluate systems of linear equations using iterative methods, namely Jacobi method and Gauss-Seidel elimination method. So let's start our discussion. So let's talk about what are iterative methods. So iterative methods obtain the solution asymptotically by an iterative procedure or a repeated procedure. A trial solution is assumed. The trial solution is substituted into the system of equation to determine the mismatch or error in the trial solution. And an improved solution is obtained from the mismatch data. So that's how we do iteration. So we solve a system of equation okay, by um, substituting okay, the, the values that we obtain from previous iterations. No? So we repeat that okay, until we get no, the desired accuracy of the, of the answer. Okay, so the iterative methods okay, are used when the number of equations is large and most of the coefficients are zero. So for uh, matrices no, that, that has many uh, zero uh, elements, they are called sparse matrix. No? So iterative methods, this is very useful okay, when the given equations okay, are too um, large. Okay, so uh, we use, no, we usually use iterative methods for, for solving those types okay, of, of problem. Uh, so now let's talk about diagonally dominant matrix. So there's a rule that in order for us to be able to use iterative methods, okay, so the given matrix or the matrix from the given systems of linear equations, uh, it should be um, diagonally dominant matrix. So we can check no, if a matrix is a diagonally dominant matrix Okay, if the absolute value of each element on the major diagonal, the major diagonal is the principal uh, diagonal. No? So if all the elements in that principal diagonal is equal to or larger than the sum of the absolute values of all the other elements in that row. Thus, the diagonal dominance is defined as. So again, uh, we can say that a matrix is a diagonally dominant matrix if Okay, all the elements or the absolute value of all the elements in the principal diagonal, they are greater than or equal to, okay, equal to the summation, to the summation, okay, of all the values of all of the other elements in that row. Okay, so these are absolute values, ha? so it doesn't matter if it's negative or positive, so we will just um, sum up or add them. Okay, add those values. Okay, so these are absolute values. Okay, so um, uh, I here in this formula are the the the, the row, no? Okay, so uh, it means that uh, A, I, I, these are the values or the elements in the diagonal, uh, principal diagonal. Okay, so uh, note that we can interchange or rearrange rows to make the matrix diagonally dominant. So we can also do that, no? So we can rearrange or interchange rows, okay, in order to make that system of linear equation diagonally dominant. So we will tackle that in our example. Let's solve this example. Determine if the system has a diagonally dominant coefficient matrix. Okay, so as we can see here, we have here this given system of linear equation. So we are going to... Um, to uh, write first no, its coefficient matrix and we will check if it is diagonally dominant. Okay, so for our solution, okay, so this will be our matrix A. So uh, it came from the coefficients of our uh, of our given systems of linear equation. So uh, these, uh, the coefficients are 10, negative 3, 4, negative 3. So that will be for our first row. And then we have here 3, 10, negative 2, 3. That will be for our second row. 3, negative 2, 10, 5. That will be for our third row. And 1, 4, negative 4, negative 10. That will be for our fourth row. So this will now be the matrix or the coefficient matrix that uh, we're going to check if diagonally dominant. So we will... Uh, use our use the definition no to to know if the given matrix is a is diagonally dominant. So we will use our formula no that the the um, 
principal diagonal, the elements in the principal diagonal. So these are the elements in the principal diagonal. 10, 10, 10, and then 10, negative 10 here. Okay, so the absolute value, okay, let's say for the first row, the absolute value of uh, of this element, no, this is in the, the principal diagonal, ha? so this element, the absolute value of this element, it should be greater than or equal, okay, to the summation of the absolute value of the other elements in that row. So the other elements here are negative 3, 4, and negative 3. So if we sum this up, these values, okay, so absolute value, ha? so ibig sabihin, uh, meaning to say we will uh, disregard the sign, so this will just be 3 plus 4 plus 3. So this will be equal to 10. So this value, no, this is actually equal, okay, to the uh, absolute value, okay, of the element, okay, uh, in the principal diagonal that is in the first row, okay. So meaning to say, um, it satisfy our condition for for the first row. So we have to check also for for the second row, third row, and fourth row. So for the second row. So the element here that is in the principal diagonal is 10. So this is that um, element. So the absolute value of this, okay, again, it should be greater than or equal to the summation of the other elements in that row. So the other elements are 3, negative 2, and 3. So absolute value, 3 plus 2 plus 3. So that will be 8. So this is, so this um, element, this is greater than it, right so it satisfies also our uh, our condition so that uh, we can say that it is diagonally dominant but we have to check again for third row so for third row this is the element in the principal diagonal okay so that is 10 so the absolute value of that should be greater than or equal to the other elements so the other elements are 3 negative 2 and 5 so we sum up this or their uh, absolute value. So that will be 3 plus 2 plus 5, and that will be 10. So this is equal to 10. So it also satisfies the condition. And for the last um, element here, this is negative 10. Okay, and it should, uh, so the absolute value of negative 10, it should be greater than or equal to the, uh, to the sum of the other elements. So that uh, those are elements are 1, 4, and negative 4. So uh, the sum of their absolute values are 1 plus 4 plus 4. So that will be 9. So uh, the absolute value of this element is greater than, okay, 9, right? So, it also satisfies this, uh, the condition. No? So, since all the rows here, no, it satisfies uh, the condition no, uh, for us to say that it is diagonally dominant. So, we can therefore conclude, okay, that uh, this coefficient matrix A is diagonally dominant. So, that will be the answer. Uh, so, for number 2, we have to determine if the system has a diagonally dominant coefficient matrix. So, this is the given system of linear equation. So, by merely um, looking at the coefficient of this uh, system of linear equations, okay, so we can see here, okay, that the, the second equation, okay, or the coefficient here in the second uh, row, okay, so these are 6, negative 2, and 3, and as we can see, Okay, that negative two. Okay, if if we uh, if we check for the condition, no, that the um, element here in the principal diagonal. Okay, so here in row two, it should be the absolute value of this should be greater than or equal to the sum of the remaining elements or remaining coefficients. But in this case, the remaining coefficients are six and three. So we we will add that six plus three. So it will not be greater. So negative two, the absolute value of negative two will not be greater than 9. Okay, that is 6 plus 3, no? So, uh, from here, no? So, we can see that it is not diagonally dominant, but we we can still have a chance, okay, that uh, this matrix, okay, could still be uh, a diagonally dominant matrix. So, we can check if we can interchange rows here. Okay, so, uh, here in, in the, the first row also, as you can see here, this also, uh, this element, okay, this is also not greater than or equal to the sum of the remaining elements here. So, uh, uh, so meaning to say the first row is also uh, not, not, in its, not in its proper place. So, we have to, to interchange uh, this row. So, um, as we can see, we can put uh, this second row to our first, to the first row, right? 
since uh, six will become the the element that is in in the principal diagonal, so the that is greater. No, the absolute value of six will be greater than the sum of uh, two and three. So that will be five. No, so it will satisfy if it is in the first row, and also um, for the third row, as we can see here, if we uh, place this in the second row. Okay, if we place this in the second row, 5 will be the, the element in the principal diagonal and it will be greater than the sum of 2 and 1. Okay, so we will put the second, the third row, this third row to the second row. And uh, this row, no, this first row, it will be placed in the third row, no, since also the uh, this negative 7, the absolute value of this will be greater than, okay, the, the, than the sum, okay, of the other elements which are 4 and 1. No, so from here, no, we can say that uh, to solve this, no, uh, we can rearrange these rows. Okay, so we will place the the second row to the first row, uh, the third row to the second row, and the first row to the third row. No, so from here, okay, we can uh, see that uh, the absolute value, okay, of the diagonal, the elements. Okay, in the diag principal diagonal, okay, they are greater than, okay, than the sum of the absolute values of the other elements in that row. So, 6 is greater than 5, 5 is greater than 3, negative 7, or the absolute value of negative 7 is greater than 5. So, uh, for, for this, no, since all uh, the principal diagonal or principal diagonal elements, okay, are greater than, okay, then the uh, sum, okay, of all the remaining elements, okay, in that row, no, so therefore, this matrix is a diagonal, diagonally dominant matrix, so this will now be the answer. So let's discuss now the first iterative method, which is Hakobi method. So Hakobi method, it is an iterative algorithm for determining the solutions of a strictly diagonally dominant system of linear equations. So again, it is a requirement that in order for us to apply this method, the system of linear equations should be diagonally dominant. Okay, so the Hakobi method is a method of solving a matrix equation on a matrix that has no zeros along its main diagonal. So fr from that um, concept no, about uh, principal uh, or diagonally dominance, no, so uh, there should be no element, okay, that is zero, okay, in the principal diagonal, okay, so, so let's consider this system of linear equation, so we're going to solve this using Hakobi method, so these are the steps that we're going to, to, to follow, okay, uh, in solving using Hakobi method, so the first step is, uh, we have to check first, okay, if the matrix is diagonally dominant, so if the matrix uh, from the system of linear equation is domi diagonally dominant, so we can proceed to the second step. So for step two, we have to solve the first equation for x1, the second equation for x2, and so on to obtain the rewritten equations. Okay, so the arrangement, okay, of the uh, equations here, okay, that we're going to use is the arrangement wherein the the system of linear equation satisfy the condition for diagonal dominance, okay, so uh, for for x1, okay, so in solving for systems of linear equations, of course, we are solving for the unknown variables, which are x1, x2, uh, until xn, no, or up to xn, so we're going to solve for x1, so we're going to solve for the first equation, okay, to solve for x1, we're going to solve for the second equation to solve for x2, and so on. We sol we will solve for the third equation for x3 and so on. Okay. Uh, so rewriting, okay, the these equations, okay, uh, for x1, okay, from the first equation, we're going to solve for x1. So solving for x1, it will just be b1 and then we transpose the, the other uh, terms here, no? So this will become neg negative, no? a12x2 and this will become negative a13x3 and up to a uh sub 1 n x sub n no and then we will divide this no we will divide both sides by a 11 to solve for x1 so this will be the um equation no uh, that we're going to use to solve for x1 now to solve for x2 okay so to solve for x2 we're going to use the second equation so from the second equation 
uh, solving for x2, so we will transpose all the terms that uh, that are not needed here. So this will be a 21 x1 that will be negative here. That uh, since it, it is transposed to the other side. So b2 minus a 21 x1 minus a 23 x3 up to a 2 n x n. Okay, so this will be divided by a 22. Okay, to solve for x2. Okay, so for the third uh, equation or for the last equation. Okay, so let's say xn. So we will just uh, transpose uh, the terms here or, or the yeah the terms here that are not, not not needed. So this is the only term that we need here since we are solving for xn. So that will just be bn minus a n one x one minus a n two x two. Okay, minus up to a n n x n. No. So, this will be divided by a uh, n n, okay, to solve for x n. Okay, so as you can see here, okay, this is the reason why the system of linear equation should be diagonally dominant because these coefficients, a11, a22, up to a n n, these are the elements in the principal diagonal, right? And it will become a denominator here. So, if this is zero, okay, so this value, the value for, for, for this solution or equation will be undefined because um, any number divided by zero that will be undefined right so that's why um, your principal diagonal the elements in the principal diagonal should not contain zero okay so um, that's our rule okay for the second step now for the third step uh, make an initial guess of the solution let x1 x2 and x3 equal to 0 as initial approximation. To solve for x1, let x2 and x3 equal to 0. To solve for x2, let x1 and x3 equal to 0. To solve for xn, let x1 up to xn minus 1 equal to 0. So the values uh, x1 uh, with, the, with exponent open and close parenthesis 1, x2 open and close parenthesis 1, x3 open and close parenthesis 1 obtained will be the values of the first iteration. Uh, so again, from the so from the uh, equations that uh, we re re that we rewrote no in in the previous slide, okay, we to solve for x one, we will assume that x two and x three are zeros, okay, to solve for x one, and to solve for x two, we will assume that uh, x one and x three are zeros, okay, and for x three to solve for that, we will assume that uh, x one and x two are zero, so. Uh, that's that's our rule now that will be the answer for 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 that okay will be our first iteration so we will we will uh, write no uh, those values as x1 with uh, exponent open and close parenthesis 1 x2 exponent open and close parenthesis 1 x3 exponent um, open and close parenthesis 1 okay so for our fourth step we just have to repeat the iteration to solve for x1 uh, open exponent uh, open and close parenthesis k x2 raised to open and close parenthesis k and then x3 open and close parenthesis k no or raised to open and close parenthesis k okay, you by using the solved values no in the previous iteration so we're going to use the value no the value for x1 x2 and x3 that we solved from from that no to solve for uh, for to solve for the next values uh, in the second iteration and we will repeat that okay we will repeat that that procedure that iteration okay until the desired accuracy has been reached so if the values solved are almost equal to the previous iteration that's how you know okay if uh, if you will stop uh, uh, solving uh, or if you will stop uh, iterating no to solve the the, the equation okay so the 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 previous uh, values okay na, that that were solved it should be equal okay to to the new value solved okay so for the, the desired accuracy for this course okay for this class we will use five decimal places so meaning to say uh, five decimal places should be uh, equal okay your previous um, iteration should be equal up to five decimal places to the solved values of your uh, of the present iteration okay so that's our num uh that's our step four so you will repeat this procedure okay you will repeat iterating okay until the desired accuracy is uh met no or has been reached
So, we will solve this system of linear equations using Jacobi method. Okay, so again, for our solution, for our step one, we have to check first, okay, if this matrix is diagonally dominant. So, by observing the, uh, the um, coefficients no, of this uh, system of linear equations, so uh, the diagonal elements here or the principal diagonal elements here are 5, 9, and 7. If we check for the first uh, row, so that this element, this is greater than, okay, the, the, than the summation of the other elements which are uh, negative 2 and 3. So the absolute value of their sum will be, or the uh, sum of their absolute values are 2 plus 3, so that will be 5. So that is greater than or equal. So uh, this first row satisfy our condition for diagonal dominance. For second uh, row, so our principal diagonal element here is 9. Okay, so this, the absolute value of this element, this is greater than the sum, okay, of the remaining elements in this second row, which are negative 3 and 1. So the sum of the absolute value of 3 and 1 is 4. So 9 is greater than, no? so it also satisfies the condition. And for the third row, so our uh, element in the, in the principal diagonal here is uh, negative 7. So the absolute value of negative 7 is greater than the sum of the absolute value of the other elements, which are 2 plus 1. So that will be 3. No? So that satisfies also the condition for diagonal dominance. Therefore, this uh, coefficient matrix from this system of linear equation, okay, this is diagonally dominant. Okay, so we can now proceed to step number 2. So for step 2, solve the first equation for x1. Okay, so for our first equation, this is our first equation, so we're going to solve for x1. Uh, solving for x1, it will just be negative 1, and then we transpose uh, 2x2 and 3x3, so that will become positive 2x2 minus 3x3 over okay, the coefficient of, uh, of x1, which is 5. So this will now be the working equation of x1. Now for x2, okay, we will solve for x2 from equation 2, so this will become 2, and then we transpose negative 3x1 and uh, x3. So that will become positive 3x1 minus x3 over the coefficient of uh, x2, which is 9. Okay, so this will now be the working equation for x2. And for x3, we will solve that from the equation 3. So solving for x3, so we can transpose um, we can transpose uh, the other elements here, or yeah, which are 2x1 and negative x2. So this will become 3 negative 2x1 plus x2 over the coefficient of x3, which is negative 7. So this will be negative 7 here. So these three equations will now be the working equation to solve for x1, x2, and x3. So from here, we can now proceed to step 3. Okay, so for our step 3, make an initial guess of the solution. So we will let x1, x2, and x3 equal to 0 as our initial approximation. Okay, so for our first iteration, that will be k is equal to 1. Okay, so to solve for the first uh, iteration for the value of x1, okay, so we will substitute, okay, uh, or we will let x2 and x3 uh, to 0, no, equal to 0. So x2 will be 0, x3 will be equal to 0, and we can now solve for x1. So solving for x1, it will just be negative 1 plus 2 times 0 minus 3 times 0. This will just be 0 over 5. So this will be negative 1 over 5 or negative 0 0.2. So this will now be the value okay, of x1 no, for first iteration. Now for x2, we will use the second equation for to solve for x2. Okay, and we will let x1 and x3 okay, equal to 0 he, here no, in this equation so that we can solve for x2. So x1 will be 0 and x3 will be equal to 0. So from here, this will just be 2 plus 3 times 0 minus 0. So this will just be 0. So this will be 2 over 9. 2 over 9 or 0 0.22222. Okay, so this will now be the value of x2 in this first iteration. Okay, so for x3, we will use the third equation. So we will let x1 and x2 uh, equal to 0 no, in this equation to solve for x3. So this will be 3 minus 2. Uh, x1 is 0 and x2 is 0 over negative 7. So this will just be negative 3 over 7 or negative 0 0.42857. So this will now be the values of x1, x2, and x3 in the first iteration. Okay, so 
for our st uh, step four, okay, we will repeat, okay, this uh, procedure, okay, we will iterate, okay, and we will use the, the solved values from the first iteration, okay, to solve for uh, the, the second iteration, okay, so for the second iteration, no, so that will be k is equal to 2, okay, so for the first uh, equation to solve for x1, okay, so we will, this is 2x2, no, so we will use x2 or the x2 that we obtained from the previous iteration, okay, which is 0 0.22222, okay, and uh, this is negative 3x3, so we will use the x3 that we solved from the previous iteration, which is negative 0 0.42857, okay, so from here, we will solve for x1, so let's input this in our calculator, this will just be negative 1 plus 2 times 0 0.22222 minus 3, times negative 0 0.42857 divided by 5. So that will be 0 0.14603. So that will now be the value of x1 in the second iteration. Now for x2, so we're going to use the equation, working equation for x2, and this is 2 plus 3x1. So the x1 that we're going to use here is the x1 from the previous iteration, which is x2, x1 is negative 0 0.2. And this is negative x3, no? So the x3 that we're going to use here is the value of x3 from the previous iteration, iteration which is negative 0 0.42857. Okay, so this will be over 9. So in putting this in our calculator, this will be 2 plus 3 times negative um, 0 0.2 minus negative 0 0.42857 divided by 9. So the answer for this is 0 0.20. 317. Okay, so that will now be the value of x2 in this uh, second iteration. Now for x3, so from the working equation of x3, so we will substitute uh, x1 and x2, okay, uh, using the uh, values obtained from the first iteration or the previous iteration. So this will become 3 minus negative 2. So let's input this in our calculator. 3 minus 2 times negative 0 0.2 plus 0 0.22222 over negative 7. So the value for this is negative 0 0.51746. Okay, so we will use uh, the values here that we obtain from second iteration, okay, to our third iteration, and so on, until the desired accuracy is met. Okay, so our desired accuracy, again, for this class is five decimal places. So we will proceed this procedure until the five decimal places okay of the of your uh, present iteration okay is uh, almost uh, is equal no the five decimal places is equal to the previous iteration so that's how uh, you will know okay uh, when to stop the iteration okay so you should only stop if the five decimal places are already equal of your present iteration and the, the previous iteration okay <laughs> So in iteration, okay, it's actually much better, okay, if we tabulate, okay, the the uh, values that we obtain from our iterations, okay. So we can um, we can use table, no, instead of uh, showing all the, the the equations, no, and the solution. So we can uh, use table. So from the table, okay, so this will be the first column will be a k, no. So this is the number of iteration, okay, and x one. Okay, raised to k will be the value of x1 at uh, that iteration, x2 uh, and x3. So, same with uh, x1, no, raised to k. Okay, so um, from here, okay, so for, for the um, for the zero iteration, no, so we are not iterating yet. So, the, the, the first uh, assumption of values for x1 and x2 and x3 are zero. So, we will... Uh, put zeros here, no? And where we are going to use the working equations. So the working equations are this equation. So we will just substitute these values, no? For x1, we will substitute x2 and x3 as zero. For x2, we will just substitute x1 and x uh, x1 and x3 as zero. And for x3, we will just substitute x1 and x2 as zero. And that will be our first iteration. And this will be the value for that. Okay, so. Um, instead of showing all the, the, the solutions no, for each and every equation, so we can tabulate our answer instead. No? So it will be much better. No? So we can use our calculator. 
Okay, so for 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 the second iteration, okay, for the second iteration here in this row, so we will just uh, substitute these values, okay, for let's say for x1, we will just substitute x2 and x3 so that we can solve for x1. For x2, we will just substitute uh, the x1 and x3, no, to, to solve for x2 here in the second iteration, here, this value, no. And for x3, we will just substitute x1 and x2 from the previous uh, iteration to solve for, for this, no. So we will repeat that, no. So you can try um, inputting this in your calculator, no, uh, to uh, solve for these values, okay, until, okay, you reach here. Uh, so as you can see here, in the 10th, uh, tenth iteration. Okay, so in the tenth iteration, you can see here that the five decimal places, okay, of this of the answers, okay, are almost equal or equal, no? They are uh, equal to the previous iteration, which is the ninth iteration. So zero point one eight six one two is equal to to the value in the ninth iteration. This value is also equal to this value, and this value is also equal to this value. So meaning to say, the answer, okay, for for this problem using iteration, okay, is at the ninth iteration. Okay, so the value of x1 will be 0 0.18612, the value of x2 will be 0 0.33123, and the value of x3 will be negative 0 0.42271. So again, the answer for this problem is at the ninth iteration. Okay. Uh, so let's proceed now to the second iterative method, which is the Gauss-Seidel elimination method. With the Kobe method, the values of x i raised to k obtained in the kth iteration remain unchanged until the entire k plus 1 iteration has been calculated. Okay, so, uh, well, in Gauss-Seidel method, we use the new values x i raised to k plus 1 as soon as they are known. Okay, so that's the difference between Hacobi method and Gauss-Seidel method. So for Hacobi method, we are solving for uh, the values, okay, of all of x1, x2 up to xn, no? And we use those values, okay, uh, for the second iteration or for the next iteration, okay? But in Gauss-Seidel method, let's say we start our iteration uh, solving for x1, we will um, assume x2 and x3 as 0, Okay, but for, for x2, okay, uh, the value of x1 that we're going to use is not 0 for our initial assumption. So, the, the value that we're going to use, okay, is the value that was uh, obtained from the, uh, from the uh, calculation of x1. Okay, so we will use the, 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 the value that we obtained already. So, we will use those values as soon as they are known. So, we will use the x1 that, that we uh, obtained no? So, and x3 will be 0. So, that's how we do a uh, Gauss-Seidel method. And then for x3, we are going to use, uh, if we are going to solve for x3, we are going to, to use the values that are already obtained for x1 and x2 to solve for x3. Okay, so that's how we do Gauss-Seidel method. Now, these are the steps in Gauss-Seidel method. So, the first one is uh, same with a uh, Hacobi method that we have to check first if the matrix from the system of linear equation is diagonally dominant. So if so, uh, we, we can proceed to the second step. So the second step, uh, we will also solve for the first equation for x1, second equation for x2, and so on no, to obtain the rewritten equation. So this is the, the same procedure okay, in Hacobi method that to solve for x1, we will solve uh, or we will use, no, we will use the first equation for x2, we will use the second equation until xn, no, uh, we will use the nth uh, equation. Uh, so let's proceed now to the third step. We will make an initial guess of the solution. Okay, so let x2 and x3 equal to 0 as initial approximation to solve for x1. Uh, so uh, after solving for, for x1, we will solve for x2, and the x1 that we're going to use to solve for x2 will be the, the uh, obtained value from x1 already, okay? And x3 will be equal to 0. And to solve for x3, we will use uh, the, the values, okay, that we already obtained in, uh, for x2 and x1, okay, to solve for x3. 
Okay, and it will that step, okay, or that iteration will will be repeated, okay, until the desired accuracy, okay, has been reached. Okay, so that will be our step four. So again, for this class, we will uh, have this desired accuracy, okay, of five decimal places. So the five decimal places of your present iteration should be equal to the five decimal places of the uh, previous iteration. So let's start solving this system of linear equations using Gauss-Seidel method. So again, for our solution, the first step, we have to check if this is diagonally dominant. Okay, so as we can see here, all the diagonal, the absolute value of the principal diagonal elements, okay, they are all greater than, okay, than the sum, okay, of the other elements, no, in that uh, same row. Okay, so the absolute value of 5 is greater than or equal to 5. Uh, the absolute value of 9 is greater than 4. Uh, negative 7 or the absolute value of negative 7 is greater than 3. So, uh, therefore, this uh, system of linear equation is diagonally dominant. Okay, so for our step 2, we will just solve for x1 using the first equation. So, this will just be negative 1 plus 2x2 minus 3x3 over 5. For x2, we will use second equation. That will be 2 plus 3x1 minus x3 over 9. For our third, uh, for x3, no, we will use the third equation. That will be um, 3 minus 2x1 plus x2 over negative 7. So we will use these equations as our working equation to solve for x1, x2, and x3. Okay, so for our step 3, we will make an initial guess of the solution. Okay, so to solve for, for the first iteration, no, uh, to solve for x1, okay, so we will let x2 and x3 as 0. Uh, so letting x2 and x3 as 0, so the uh, x1 in the first iteration will be negative 1 over 5 or negative 0 0.2. So to solve for x2, okay, so we will use, okay, the x1 as soon as it, as soon as it is known. Okay, so this is the, the uh, x1 that we're going to use here. So this will be negative 0 0.2. And x3, we have no value yet for x3. So we will uh, have an initial assumption of 0. Okay, so solving for this 2 uh, plus... So let's input in our calculator. 2 plus 3 times negative, square root, negative 0 0.2 rather minus 0 over 9. So that will be 7 over 45 or 0 0.55. 5, 6. No? So that will now be the value of x2. Now to solve for x3, okay, so we will need x1 and x2 here. Okay, so the values that we're going to use for x1 and x2 here are the values that we already obtained here. See, uh, x1 is negative 0 0.2 and x2 is 0 0.15556. Okay, so solving for x3, let's input this in our calculator. 3 minus 2 times negative 0 0.2 plus 0 0.515556, okay, over negative 7. So this will give us negative 0 0.50794. So this will now be the values of x1, x2, and x3, okay, in the first iteration. Okay, so we will repeat this uh, procedure, okay, in our step 4. Okay, so for, for the second iteration, again, we're going to use uh, these values that we obtained, okay, from, from the first iteration, and we're going to use them, okay? So for x1, we are going to use x2 and x3. So the value that we obtained here for x2 and x3, we're going to use use them, okay, uh, to solve for, for um, x1, no? And the x1 here, actually, we, we will no longer use this here, the value of the x1 uh, from the first iteration. Okay, so uh, solving for x1, we input this in our calculator, negative 1 plus 2 times 0 0.15556 minus 3 times negative 0 0.50794 over 5. So that will be 0 0.16699. So this will now be the, the new value of x1. So we will no longer use, okay, the, the value of x1 for the first iteration because we have a new value now, okay? So this is the value now that we're going to use to solve for x2 and also for x3. Now for x2, we're going to use the value of x1 here, okay? And the value of x3 from, from, from here, okay? So this will be negative 0 0.50794, okay? So let's input this in our calculator to solve for x2, 2 plus 3 times 0 0.16699, minus negative 0 
0.50794 over 9. So this will be 0 0.33432. So this will now be the new value of x2. And we're going to use this new value to solve for x3. So to solve for x3, we need x1. So the value that we're going to use here is this value. And for x2, well, the value that we're going to use here is this value. So solving for x3, this will be 3 minus 2 times 0 0.16699 plus 0 0.33432 over negative 7. So the answer for this is negative 0 0.42862. So this will now be the values of x1, x2, and x3 in the second iteration. So we will repeat this since the the, for the previous iteration, negative 0 0.2 is not yet equal to the present iteration, negative uh, which is 0 0.16699, also for the uh, other values. no. So we will repeat this procedure until okay, the value of the um, present iteration, okay, is equal or almost or equal, no, up to five decimal places to the uh, previous iteration. Okay, so again, it will be much better if we tabulate our answer. So we will uh, create a table here, okay, where in the first column here will be the iteration and then the value of x1, x2, and x3 for that iteration, no. Okay, so we will use the working our working equations here to solve for x1, x2, and x3. Okay, so uh, again, for gauss seidel method, for, to solve for x1, we will use x2 and x3 here, which are initially 0. And then to solve for x2, okay, we will use the second equation, and we will use x1, this value that we already solved. Okay, and x3 will be the, the 0, will be 0, no? And for, to solve for x3, Okay, the the um the values that we're going to use for x1 and x2 will be uh, the the values that we already uh, solved here. No, so that procedure will repeat. Okay, until okay the the uh, decimal places or the five decimal places of the present iteration is almost equal to the uh, uh, five decimal places of the previous iteration. So here in this case, as you can see here in the seventh iteration. The value of x1 is just equal to the value here in the sixth iteration. Same with uh, the value of x2. It's just the same with the value in the sixth iteration. And for x3, so the this value is also equal to the value from the previous iteration. So meaning to say, the answer for this problem is located at the sixth iteration. Okay, so the answer for this, for x1, that will be 0 0.18612 x2, 0 0.33123, and for x3, negative 0 0.42271. So, as you can uh, notice here, okay, that this problem is the same problem that, that we solve using Hakobi method. And in Hakobi method, the answer, okay, is at the uh, ninth iteration. But here in Gauss-Seidel method, okay, it's, it's just in sixth iteration, no? So, meaning to say, okay, gauss we we can... Um, we can solve no faster no or we can solve um, sooner okay the 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 answers using gauss seidel method than in hakobi method okay so uh, this will now be the the answer for this problem so that concludes our discussion i hope that you learn and i hope that you attain the learning outcomes for this topic so keep reminded that we have a CM assessment task for this topic and see to it that you submit that on our next meeting. Study well, class. Keep safe and God bless. Bye-bye.